Hey guys! See, I, I still feel like I can like... <laughs> what? I don't know that I can like... project in a, in this public location. I can. Yeah. Here's these weirdos. Hey guys, we're here in Tarpon Springs, Florida, and we are visiting a little marketplace here with some awesome music. This awesome band with a dad and a son. Um, great music, great food. But, more importantly, we are caught up on The Masked Singer. We are so behind. <laughs> so listen, we had to binge watch <laughs> three episodes back to back to back, and we're ready to rock. So, <laughs> so I hope you guys are too. Hey, listen, we were traveling, and then I broke my arm because she beat me, and <laughs> now we're caught up. So, we're going to get into this thing. <laughs> That's our excuse, and it's the truth. Okay, I'm so, you still love us, right? Okay, I'm going right, to go cool. character. Yeah. Uh-huh, all right, cool. You good? Are you? Good? you got your cools out? Are you good? Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Alright. Cool. So, I'm going to go through all the characters over the last three episodes and talk about them. And we're going to start with the butterfly. The butterfly. So, the butterfly was Michelle Williams. I have no idea who Michelle Williams is. I know who Michelle Obama is. <laughs> I don't know who Michelle Williams is. Do you know who Michelle Williams is? She's from Destiny's Child. Oh. But cool. I mean, I'm sure no one's surprised that a guy doesn't know about Destiny. How am I supposed to guess the butterfly when I don't even know who Michelle Williams is? So, but anyways, they had a football clue. They said on the field, she's used to being on the field with Giants, Broadway. There was a teapot in there. I don't know. Do you have anything to say about the butterfly? Okay, so obviously when you're watching this, everything is going to be spoilers. And I'm a little bit bitter because I thought that she did an amazing job. I think she has an extremely beautiful voice. And I'm very frustrated that she went home. I'm frustrated. I do like the thingamajig, but I felt like the butterfly should have had an opportunity to stay a little bit longer. So I felt that the butterfly was doing a great job, and I love the butterfly. However, up against the thingamajig, I thought the thingamajig did a better job. Now, in their SmackDown round, I did think the butterfly performed better. Yes. But in the original round, I thought thingamajig did better. In that case, I agree. But, like, overall, what do you guys think? I feel like the butterfly was overall a better performer than the thingamajig. Is the thingamajig mm -hmm. endearing? Of course. I liked her energy and her like bouncing around and like doing like like little butterfly things all the time. I like when they try to get in character. But regardless of that, she's an amazing singer and she has a lot of range. And I do feel like this show is about the overall performance. But I do feel like she was one of my favorites. Can I say one more thing about the butterfly? No. Okay, go ahead. A thing. Wait. <laughs> I was okay, gonna go. say what? it anyway. But go. <laughs> Once she was revealed as Michelle Williams. Michelle Obama. Oh, there's a big difference between Michelle Williams and Michelle Obama. But oh. anywho, <laughs> I feel like I feel like people like her are amazing role models. She's been through some struggles. Oh. She holds herself well, and gosh, she really, See, now, really touched my heart. She now my heart. it sounds like you're talking about Michelle Obama. No, uh, I guarantee if I asked Sean three facts about Michelle Obama, he would know one. Um, first of all, her name starts with an M. Second of all. Her last name starts with an O. And third of all, she was married to the President of the United States. I knew he was going to say all three of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought Butterfly was great. And now we got the tree, the Christmas tree. I know exactly who this is. I, you know exactly who I this know, is? I know, wait. I know exactly who this who is. Who is it? The tree oh, was... I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What? Hold the phone. <laughs> I know exactly who this is. Okay. I love that guy. Oh, so here's what I did not like on the tree. I mean, I love the tree, okay? The, the aunt was her name, Anna Gaster. But in the, in the last two episodes, they were talking about how they kept saying friends, and then they said smelly cat, and then they did another friends reference. And I'm like, so it got us all thinking it was Phoebe. And then yes. they even had, then, then they had someone wearing the blonde wig that looked like Phoebe's hair. That's not very nice. And then we find out that it's not Phoebe from Friends. And so I think that was complete BS. They were just trying to Misleading. like... Misleading. Yeah. Fake news. False hope. 
fake news. False hope. Those were not real hints. But there was one guy with the long blonde hair. That's what I just said. And they were brushing his hair. And she said, I want to just be with my friends. What did that have to do with? Does anyone know? Please tell me because I was mad. It's a baby back BS. I wanted it to be Phoebe, the girl, Lisa Kudrow. That's what I wanted it to be. No, so. I like that Anna girl. You know, she's oh, actually no, like very Anna. funny. She's hilarious, but I really want it to be Phoebe. But what's with the Rachel Ray guess? Really? Rachel Ray? That did not sound anything like Rachel Ray, because someone said that she has a raspy voice. Yeah, she's like lost her voice from yelling all the time. She said, remember when we went and saw her in person? She said that something about her voice. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. We did see Rachel Ray's show in person in New York one time, and it was amazing on the side note. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're like best friends with Rachel Ray. <laughs> I wish. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. And if you don't see the pattern, I'm going over the ones who've been eliminated. So the next one up is the thingamajig. No surprise here. For weeks and weeks and weeks, everyone knew it was uh, Victor Aladipo. A lot of poo. Okay, so here's a lot what's of poo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, I think my favorite part about the reveal of what are you doing? Victor. The reveal of Victor was so much fun because Ken always gets oh, everything right. wrong and he just so happened to get that one right now does anyone think that that one was staged or do you think it was real and genuine that's my question okay so we were both saying because ken was guessing it right and they were all going oh no you're totally wrong like playing it up but then when i saw their reactions to him getting it right i started to think maybe they really did that was charlie fighting for food <laughs> I started to think that they really didn't think he was right. And I think the reason why they thought that, that that's, I, that's a lot of thinks and thoughts in a sentence, is that they don't really know their basketball players. And I think Ken... What do you mean? Name, oh, Ken's the only one that knows basketball? Name, name three basketball players right now. That's what, like, none of them know. Dennis knows, Rodman. He's not playing anymore. Michael Jordan. So my point is... Wait, I got one more. None of the judges... <laughs> wait, 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 I got one more. None of the judges know <laughs> any of the basketball players, and, and I think Ken actually follows basketball, so... Oh. So hold on, hold Thing on, hold Jig, on. Victor Alatipo. <laughs> Victor Alatipo. No surprises here. I'm Great singer. Myself. I do think it was... He got voted out at the appropriate time, you know, in the semi... I think it was the semifinals. Um, he made it far. He's How not a professional he, singer. Though? On a side note, he seemed like a really sweet young guy. I think that he, yeah, I think he had a great energy about him. He seemed like a really nice guy. The real question is, are him and Nicole going to actually go on a date? At first, I was getting a little bit annoyed with, like, the flirtationist that was going on. But the flirtationist. <laughs> However, I think he's adorable, and the two of them would make adorable couples. Not as adorable as Corinne and myself, but maybe mm-hmm. in the middle. My food's getting cold. Yeah. I hope you guys don't mind me eating it in front of you. There's been a lot of prep here, and our food has gotten cold. All right, moving on to. I'm gonna give it to my dog so he can have runny diarrhea. <laughs> Wait. <hold on. laughs> wow. So, moving on is the leopard. I would say the leopard was my biggest disappointment. And I know, Michelle, we've been talking on Instagram, and you were giving me 15 reasons why it's the white seal. And I just really, really, really wanted it to be Dennis Rodman with all my heart. And Me too, because I feel like seal sings so much better than what I was actually hearing. How about you guys? What do you think? He was disguising his voice, I think, because when he took his head off and started singing, he sounded like Seal. So I think he was in character. He created that is so true. He created that leopard character, was a more flamboyant version of himself, Mm -hmm. and um, he was was, and he and he had a a character voice. But watching the leopard, um, I wanted Dennis Rodman, and I knew it was going to be Seal. Michelle proved me it was going to be Seal, and. I kept going back and forth. I'm like, Dennis Rodman, no seal. Dennis Rodman, no seal. But he was definitely playing a part. I thought that was fun. That made him a little bit different. He was 100% playing a part because clearly he's not into men. But he was definitely teasing and playing along like he was kind of, you know, a flamboyant, interested in Nick Cannon type of guy. And he even told Nick Cannon thanks for playing along. I like that. I thought that was kind of neat that he did that. And he was being playful and having fun and he enjoyed that experience so you know the reveal made me happy in that sense because he was having a good time I also, he said he was doing it for his kids i'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> i like that and I was, I was about to say the same thing one of the things that i loved is that he said that his whole reason and motivation for doing this was that he wanted to think he wanted his kids to think he was cool 
And that's something I would do. So I, I love that about him. Yeah, I have respect for Seal for that. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to jump into the, the singers who have yet to be unmasked, which is the Fox, the Rot, and the Flamingo. So we're going to start with the Fox. And now, now we get into the actual meat and potatoes of this episode. Um, but before I continue, just a reminder, Life After Neverland needs your support. So if you're watching this video and you've made it this far into the video and you have not subscribed to our channel, please give us a subscription. We have a lot of stuff planned. We've got a big future for 2020. We need you to be here. Thank you. We appreciate it. You guys, you are so awesome. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> so Fox. Now, there's a big debate here on the Fox. You know, it's narrowed down to, to, I think, two people. Well, obviously, we think, if you've been watching our channel, that it is Wayne Brady. And every I single I time I hear his voice, I think Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. It's Wayne Brady. And thank you... Robin Thick, right? His name is Robin. I always want to call him his dad's name. Anyway, um, he guessed it. I, it's him. It is Wayne Brady. He said, I just can't think of anybody else. In episode 10, he finally guessed Wayne Brady, and we're like, <sighs> finally. We've been saying this since, I think, week one. Anyone else? It's either week one or week two. I don't remember which week we guessed, but we've been, and she guessed it first because. In his very first performance, he did something with, like with his hand that uh, Wayne Brady always does. It's like a signature move while he was dancing. And then when she said it, I heard the voice. I love Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's my favorite TV show. And I was like, so we've been saying this forever. Robin Thicke finally guessed it. And obviously everyone else saying it could be Jamie Foxx. If Jamie Foxx pops out of that fox head, I am going to puke. Well, I'm going to be disappointed. I feel bad saying this, but I'm not a real Jamie Foxx fan. That might be just me, but I am a Wayne Brady fan, and I would love to see him on the show. I'm saying she's a gold digger, but she yeah. ain't messing with no broke, broke. I, I don't get into Jamie Foxx. That's him, Fox. right? Yes. <laughs> I hate that I song. I just don't. Sorry, guys. But he does have a new movie coming out. Yeah, but there are some Jamie Foxx clues, unfortunately, that I'm going to go over. So, um, first of all, there's a lot of piano references. The Fox is always playing a piano, and Jamie Foxx is obviously a very talented pianist. Is he a talented... I can't even talk. Is he a talented pianist? Is he really? Pianist? That's the best word in the English dictionary. Pianist. <laughs> <laughs> but what was that movie that he was in? Ray? He was in a movie called Ray. Yeah. About Ray Charles? Was it Ray Charles? Yes! And it would be just like Jamie Foxx to like harp on that. Yeah. Um, the true... They said true blue superhero... I'm going to need to dive into Google because I don't get the reference, but they did say, they keep talking about the superhero aspect, which no one knows how that would tie into Wayne Brady. Yeah, even Robin was like, I'm so confused by that, right? Yeah. He did say that, but he felt like it was, I mean, he it is, was mm, Wayne Brady for sure. And he has hit superhero, like, hardcore. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, teaching, oh, he's teaching the mini fox, so he's got like a little son or a protege that he's working with right now. It looks like a girl, like his little girl maybe? Yeah, which that didn't help me at all. Uh, let's see. He said that his voice has been underestimated in his career. Even though he's been known as a triple threat, his acting has been what's really propelled his career, and his voice has been kind of underestimated, which I think Wayne Brady and Jamie Foxx fall into that category. Um, there was a chalkboard that said yes and, and we haven't been able to like decipher that yet, so if any of you guys have a clue. There were stools in one of the clips, and I mean, this would be like... And the stool came from a lot of poo. <laughs> no, but like whenever they did uh, Whose Line Is It Anyways, they were all sitting on stools. Yeah. Ugh, I don't know. That might be a stretch. That's a stretch. Um, let's see. There's a picture of a bunch of dogs. Didn't help us. Um, he said he wants to break up with his costume and, and separate himself from his superhero image. Which would make me think it's not Jamie Foxx or Wayne Brady. It's a third person that we haven't thought of yet, which at one point the guy who plays um, Hawkeye was, I guess. I just don't see that guy being in this type of show. Yeah. I just don't. Now, here's the Jamie Foxx reference. Um, he said, something, 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 unchained. Django Unchained, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx movie. So that was a strong hint toward it being Jamie Foxx. And, oh yeah, there was like a, a long time where the word Richard came up on the, sh the screen. And that I made, made me think it was Jamie Foxx, because what's short for Richard? Dick. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, um, let's see. And he says he's friends with the rabbit. So, friends with the rabbit. That. I could be but either. Wayne Brady could be friends with 
Joey Fatone. I can see that. They both have fun, vibrant personalities, and that doesn't really tell me a whole lot because Joey Fatone is a very fun, charismatic person. He could be but, friends with anyone, really. However, he said the rabbit came over to my foxhole, and Jamie Foxx has a, a talk show called The Foxhole. Ugh! Do you guys really think it's Jamie Foxx? Please all, comment below if you think that. All signs and hints, and the fact he's a fox, it all points to Jamie Foxx, but the voice and the movement points toward Wayne Brady. Now, Seal was trying to be sneaky and, like, have a actual persona that's different than himself in order to throw people off, which is why we were thinking it was Dennis Rodman, and we couldn't, like, figure out, because we know Seal is not flamboyant like that. But then, so, would Jamie Foxx be, like, you know, sneaky in a sense that, let me just be as obvious as possible... And then they might not think, you know, that's too obvious. So, is that his game? Is that his game? Is, is that, that your game? game? I don't like you anyways. Okay, there so lie. moving on <laughs> to the most frustrating one for us is the Rottweiler because it is screamingly, screamingly, screamingly obvious that it's Chris Daughtry <sighs> and the judges refuse to guess it. And they have to know by now it's Chris Daughtry. Why are the judges purposely not guessing Chris Daughtry? In a way, is this fun for Chris Daughtry? That they don't know that it's him? They know it, that it's him. Everyone it, knows that it's him. Is it frustrating to Chris that they don't know that it's him? Because they might think, do they not even listen to my music? How do they not know it's me? Because for me, if it's not Chris Daughtry, I must be a complete idiot. Now, right? I, I can't connect any of these clues to Chris Daughtry. All I know is that the voice and the movements are 100% him. But the clues are, well, that he's insecure, which in during the American Idol season, he was really outspoken about that. Um, he likes his Zen and meditate. Okay, it's, uh... Who doesn't? It's, it's Moby. I don't know. Um, he, he made a reference to 30 seconds. Whatever. Um, Do you guys know what that means? He quoted My So-Called Life. And when I googled My So-Called Life and Chris Daughtry, I got a hit. But then when I opened up the article, I couldn't find them referencing it at all. So I still couldn't really decipher that. Um... He talked about kids, and Chris Daughtry like, was all about his kids in his uh, American Idol days. Um, a passport. I mean, Chris Daughtry traveled the world. Is that the... Here's the deal. It just sounds like Chris Daughtry, does it not? I mean, everything about, like, oh my gosh, he gives me goosebumps when he sings. So and there... he knocked everyone's socks off. Like, literally, everybody yeah. was in tears, and I was in tears. I was in tears. I got emotional. I cried my eyes out. You better stop it. I literally got the clumps. I did. And I remember back when I was watching, he can be as silly as he wants. The fact, please, when I was watching American Idol back in the day. Back in the day. Chris Daughtry was my favorite. Was her favorite. I know he's trying to be a smart aleck, but he was my favorite. And I'll be highly disappointed if it's not Chris Daughtry. Their guess is? Drop the mic. It's Chris Daughtry. Moving on. <laughs> Finally, the flamingo, the Latin fireball. And we had a subscriber, or at least a comment down below, that told us that we were saying who we think the flamingo is, which we think it's Adrian. By long. By long, but I was saying, we saying bouillon. Bouillon, bouillon. But I really want to say bouillon because it sounds more fancy. Yeah. Okay, but I it's appreciate like, that you told us that it was wrong because you're correct. I was saying it's it like wrong. saying Victor a lot of poo. But that's, that's so much better. I didn't really ever watch The Cheater Girls. I hope you guys can forgive me. Well, that's not your generation. No. So, Flamingo. Um, right now, the most popular guest is Adrian Bailong, Fantasia, Hilary Duff. <laughs> By Bailong. I think Fantasia I and Hilary Duff are just they're just throwing things out there because everyone knows it's Adrian. It has to be this it chica. It has to be Adrian. This cheetah chica. Cheetah chica. We're basically rolling into... It's a cheetah chica. We're rolling into the finale. The fox is the only one that's questionable. The other two are pretty obvious. I just think it's a... Hands down, we know who the top three are. Yep. Wayne Brady... Adrian Bailon Bouillon. Well, it might be Jamie Foxx. Mm -mm. And Chris Daughtry. Now, do you guys think that those are the three best choices out of everyone that has participated in this competition? Because I do. My food is cold. <laughs> Last season, I was not excited about 
T-Pain winning because I really think Joey Fatone should have won the rabbit. He was the best one, hands down. So I wasn't excited about that. But any of these three, if they win, I think it's a good candidate to win. I, I really that, want the Roddy to win, though. Chris Daughtry. Yeah, I, I don't. I think the really cool thing is I'm happy with all three of them. So I'm not going to be disappointed this year. I loved the rabbit last season. Like I was, he was the man. And when he didn't win, I almost didn't watch season two. But I'm Joey, glad I did. Joey is such a showman mm -hmm. and such a good like entertainer all around. Yeah. You know, so I really am sad that he didn't win. So I wouldn't mind if Adrian won, and I wouldn't mind if Chris Daughtry won, and I definitely wouldn't mind if Wayne Brady won. So no matter what, it's a win-win. But if Jamie Foxx is in it, then. Something stinks. So basically, are you sad that we only have one more week of The Masked Singer? I don't feel sad now. Do was, you feel sad? Was your triple episode binge a little much today? For me, it's a lot. I'll tell you, by episode three, while binging, she was starting to get some mad AD. <laughs> she was up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> Look, I'm such a weirdo because I like all these morbid shows like The Walking Dead and Supernatural and stuff like that. So here we are with a light, fluffy show, and I've got ADHD <laughs> up my butt. Well, <laughs> What's going on? So my segue to that... <laughs> what does that say about me? My segue to that comment is I have to pick a new show now because yeah. she still has two shows that she's covering. Mine's over next week, so if there's a show coming up soon that you would love us to cover, let us know in the comments. Give us a subscribe, like our channel... Help get us up there. We're stuck in the 400s. We want to get some momentum. Until then, you guys, um, we'd love to know who you think the fox is, who you think that the flamingo is, and <laughs> last but not least, who is the Roddy? Do you think it's Chris Daughtry? What do you think? And on a final note, shame on... Who? My brain just, like, went off. Hmm. The host of the show. Oh, okay. On another note... Shame on Nick Cannon for going after my boy Eminem. Ugh, my goodness. Hey, if you guys know anything about that, shoot your comments down <laughs> below too. Do you think Nick Cannon is like on point with his disses towards Eminem? Or do you think that he is full of blogna, <laughs> dog poop, not even funny at all? <laughs> Good night, everyone. We're going to go pick up our Christmas presents now. Yeah, Nick, you'll never be the real Slim Shady. Bye, guys. This is what I look like through a water bottle. Bye. Really have any guesses. She doesn't know if we did a good job or not because we really didn't have any guesses. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't feel like we had any good guesses because I don't know. I'm stuck in the 80s. Now, if they have Def Leppard or Pat Benatar or Cindy Lauper, we don't have any ever... good guesses. That's why I knew Patti LaBelle. I knew who Patti LaBelle was because that's we my pretty... generation and that's great. Don't listen to her. We did pretty good. <gasps> How do you shut this thing off? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Bye.